Howdy folks, TJ here. Atari and networking. Oh, what a bit of voodoo I've been running into. But I thought I would cover a video I've experienced for the first time after 40 years of owning an Atari, uh, at least in terms of an ST since 1987, actually networking two Atari ST-based computers together to share some data. I thought it would be easy. Well, no, I didn't. I knew it would be troublesome because uh, networking wasn't something that was uh, right out of the chute. People buying home computers were able to buy one. That's what they could afford. And they would go home and enjoy it. And sneaker net and floppy copy and, hey, floppy copy, that kind of rhymed. Cassettes and you make duplicates. All a lot of fun. But networking really didn't come into the picture until you had two. And not a lot of people had two computers. Oh, I'm going to sneeze. Oh. Uh, but some did. Of course, those schools or groups or people taking their computers to a LAN party or a network party, a computer nerd party, would want to network some computers together. So I've been exploring it. Now, I own a lot of Ataris, as you've been watching my channel. The only time I'm going back in memory that I somewhat, if you want to call serial connecting two computers together, networking. I guess you could call it that because I'm pretty sure back in the olden days, 1980, when I had an Atari 800, I did at one point, I believe with a friend's computer, use a serial cable so we could connect the two together somehow, but that's going off of memory. And my memory's a little foggy these days. With an ST, nope, never, never touched it. Uh, and so I've been tinkering. And uh, something I've been wanting to do and I still haven't been able to do it yet, is this TTO30, the Falcon that's there, and the Mega STE that's there, have one unique thing that none of the other Ataris have, like my 520 or 1040 or Mega ST, and that is the LAN port, which, if you look at it, looks like an Apple Talk or Local Talk port. I think they called it, what, RS422 or something? And I sure hate there being ports on something that you never use. <laughs> it drives me crazy. And I still haven't been able to use it. Uh, we'll talk about that in a bit. But along the way, trying to get that to work, I did say, you know what? I, I still want to connect these computers together. And the cool thing about the Ataris from day one, all of them, the ST and up, had MIDI ports. Those MIDI ports were... I don't know if it was just kind of an add-on. Oh, it only costs a, a buck a port. Go ahead and add them, and maybe somebody will come up with an idea to use them. Well, musicians sure fell in love with having MIDI ports on an Atari. And that also allowed people like you, like me, to connect these computers together via MIDI cables. And you could have a MIDI maze session with 16 other people, connect these computers, and I just made a video of my first experience playing MIDI maze, Quite, uh, quite fun, but you can connect in a MIDI ring all these computers together and share data. Now, I'm not quite there yet. Of course, I did MIDI cable four computers together and played. Did I start this recording? <laughs> I better double check. <laughs> um, yes, I did. <clears throat> I'm sorry about coughing in your ear, but that's the way it goes around here. I've, I've got chronic cold, not cold, but asthma and allergies, so I'm always hooky crooky. Uh, okay, where was I? Uh, uh, so, yeah, uh, they come with MIDI ports. And these MIDI ports allows connecting easily the computers all together. Now, if you have the software to tie them together to do something more important than playing MIDI maze, well, those are options, too. I've been down a rabbit hole, a rabbit hole of different programs such as Duet, D-U-E-T, like you're having a duet. Uh, MIDI-COM, Universal Network, uh, and there's others. SGS Net, uh, Big Net, Little Net, <laughs> Fish Net, I don't know. There's nets all over the place. The one that I explored now, because I did find one video online, and I'm trying to remember his name. Commodore is not the only thing. Uh, it's a, a YouTube channel that he does wonderful Atari videos, and he tried do it. And it looked fairly simple. So I, I slapped it on here, and the reason I wanted to try it is because I wanted to use the LAN port. Supposedly, Duet lets you do that. Well, I spent all of yesterday, and I think a day before, trying to get it to work, and it wouldn't work. So it's either these ports are really not active, 
but I've seen enough people say, no, they, they work, but you got to do the right thing. Uh, or my Farallon uh, Apple Talk Local Talk connectors, I bought two used ones, not quite right. It just takes regular telephone cord between the two. Uh, I did all that and I couldn't get them to communicate. Uh, we'll talk about that at a future time because I'm not done yet. Uh, the only thing that I threw into the wrench is these Farallon adapters. You have to terminate the open. There's two connectors on each. You have to terminate. I thought only one side, but apparently you got to terminate both sides. So my adapters only came with one. So technically I, I bought another one and when it gets here, I'm going to try again. But I I have a feeling that either Duet's just not working right, my cabling's not working right, one of the Farallons is not r working right, I'm not working right, <laughs> one of those. But yeah, it, 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 I couldn't get it to work. So I said, okay, screw it. Let's go to the MIDI. <coughs> so I had recently bought a whole bunch of MIDI cables, and I connected the Mega STE and the TT together, I, and I spent a number of hours, and I still couldn't get it to work. <laughs> uh, because, and I'll show you here in a moment, the duet program was, uh, the manual was in German. And somebody did a copy of it and interpreted it. I think their thing said, do it this way. But then I saw somebody else say, no, do it this way. And I'm sure I was, it's just me. I was trying all these options and couldn't get it to work. I finally got it to work yesterday. And for the first time, I experienced two Ataris connected and I could share one drive with the other drive. It was really cool. Now you're saying, TJ, kids are born with, uh, you know, internet right out of the chute when they come out and they can uh, connect to the Wi-Fi and exchange data. Well, yeah, nowadays it's like that. But in the olden days, you got to do little things differently. you got to use cables and all this other stuff. Let me move the camera in a little closer. I'm going to, I'm not going to show you all the setup because I've basically done that, but I want to explain what I've done. Show you a trick because in case you try to do it and try to uh, use MIDI cables, I think this one thing that you may see will help you, hopefully. Uh, although maybe there's voodoo that uh, apparently happened and it's not going to work today when I try it. So, uh, MIDI cables. So, this is MIDI cabled over to my Mega STE from the in to the out, from the out, uh, no, from the in to the out, from the in to the out. Basically, you made, I made a, uh, a MIDI ring here of just two computers. And I've booted each up to their desktop. This has an internal hard drive. The Mega STE does not. So I only had a floppy. And that may have caused some other problems. Maybe that's why I'm having an issue is seeing each other's data because one's a floppy and one's a hard drive. Anyway, let me move the camera in a little uh, closer. I'll show you a couple things. And then we'll enjoy this wonderful networking of two Ataris as best as I can kind of show it. Uh, let me do this. Let me enlarge the screen just a little bit more. <laughs> There, that should be good. Oh, then you're seeing the howdy folks, DJ here. All right, so this is an Atari TT 030, uh, booted up to regular old desktop. What I, uh, so after, I've already got the auto setup. So in the auto folder, there's some files from Duet you need to put in here. If you're doing the MIDI uh, networking, you need to put this particular MIDI version of the driver in here, along with a config program and an INF file. When you put that in there, the computer boots up as normal, but then you've got to load this, I'm going to uh, call it virtual network icon that's going to be on the desktop that is going to say, that is from this computer, and we'll talk about that more. So number one is you've got to go up to options. Depending on what uh, version of Tosh you're running, this one's 3.06 on a TT. I've got to go up to options down to install device before I do that. So you only see four icons, A, B, C, D option down to install devices and this magical n is showing up n stands for network so let me show you another uh let me show you it working and then i'll show you the trick at the end that i think is important that you need to know i need to now go do that to this other computer let me uh i don't think you need to see me do that on here but we'll eventually show you the mega ste i'm going to go up to options down to install devices and it now also has a n hard drive icon on the desktop I'm going to now double, I've got a floppy in there. This one will see the floppy of the Mega STE because there's no hard drive in there. That one can see the hard drive over here. So supposedly if everything's working still and I didn't bump a cable, I could double click on N and it's gonna show you the contents of here. Before I do that though, 
L uh, let me take this camera off. Uh, no, let's. I'll, I'll zap the camera over quick. Uh, double click. The Edmega STE floppy is a worm. And then I'm back over here. <laughs> and there it is. There's the contents of the floppy drive. So let me put this back up here because then I'll just show you that it is working. Uh, oh, geez. I'm going to knock the phone over like I did the other day. Uh, if you watch that video. Okay. Uh, is that good enough? Uh, let me go down a little bit. Focus. Okay. So... It is seeing the floppy drive I mean, through a MIDI network. Now, you're probably saying, oh, I used to do that all the time in the, in the 80s and 90s. Well, I never did, so it's all fresh and special to me. So I'm now seeing the contents over here. So my TT is probably going to become the workhorse in this family, in this office, where I'm going to connect more modern things to it, like possibly a future side cart, uh, and then a future Axie to S hard drive type of device and other things that I'll and maybe even get it on the internet uh, to where I could grab stuff and then disperse it through a MIDI ring of networking all my Ataris together. Now you may say, why don't you just buy one of those things for each and every computer? Because those things cost a hundred and some odd bucks each. And uh, I'm running out of money. I've ran out of money. So I can't buy one for each and every computer and do the same thing for everything. So that's what a network's about. You can network the computers together to share information, right? That's what networking is. So anyway, uh, so here is the uh, N. Uh, N is seeing all the contents of my floppy over there. And right now, if I wanted to do something, and this is not going to be speedy. Number one, it's MIDI. It's what... 31,000 bits <laughs> per second or whatever. I have to go look at the number. But anyway, it's not super speedy. And it's a floppy that I'm talking to. If it was a hard drive, it would be a little bit faster. But we're going to say, okay, what do I want to copy over here? Basic. A basic program. I want to copy that over to my D drive. I'm going to double click on D. And it's simple drag and drop. I'm now going to grab this and copy it over to here and click OK. And now you start counting down the numbers. One, two, two, two three, two, four. It took about a minute but the last time I ch ch changed it. But you got the, fi the little B down here. I was going to say fire B, but it's not a fire B. It's a, uh, a, a working B. I did own a fire B at one time, but I got rid of it a long time ago. Should have kept it, but you know, fire B is kind of a little depressing. It's such a neat computer, but it never really, you know, didn't sell thousands i don't know how many it sold a hundred i don't know it was a cool computer and it sure was fast and it sure could add some capabilities but for whatever reason i didn't see big draw from it a lot of people using it so this thing's still copying so it's not speedy but we're using old computers number one so you're used to the speed not being speedy you're slowing your life down you're enjoying the ambiance of sipping the wine instead of gulping the wine it's not a shot it's a uh, see, that wasn't too bad, right? So now I've got over here on D, uh, let's open up the window a little bit bigger. Oh, geez. <laughs> uh, open. It's down here someplace. A uh, basic, basic. Oh, uh, there it is. Basic program. I've now copied via MIDI cable connected my, my second networking because I did one the other day to test this. But it is working. How cool is that? Now, I would love if the LAN port were, damn it. Uh, I don't think it is. So I'm going to have to explore another program. Maybe it's Duet not working right, or this LAN port really doesn't work. I saw somebody in, because if you go type in TT030 uh, LAN port, you'll see people have talked about it and people that have said that it's worked, but no, there's no video evidence of it. I've never seen anybody do it. Uh, and somebody even said something about on one of the boards there's like, I don't know if it's a jumper or something, that you've got to change the jumper to where it does something with the serial port back here and makes this LAN port active. I didn't quite follow, but that seems silly if out of the chute, Apple would disable an external port like that. Doesn't make sense. But anyway, maybe it's that. Or maybe it's my cabling, but I'm going to keep trying. Ultimately, if it never works, it doesn't. But at least I have a MIDI uh, network here in my home. I've got a 16-foot cable going from here around here. I need to buy a couple of longer ones, maybe a 25-footer. I don't know if 
that degrades the connection <laughs> with, through a MIDI, but 16 is really tight and it's the cable is just running over stuff. I'm gonna get a couple 25 footers and try it again and at least keep these two computers networked. I think it's cool, uh, but let me show you something. So let me show you something. <laughs> uh, a drive. Uh, uh, I don't want a drive. I want a C drive, my hard drive. Cause I wanna show you in the auto folder is a Duet con uh, config INF file. And this is where I'm going to explain something to you. So double click on it and it's going to show. This is basically the information that Duet Config and Duet Program need to communicate. This is the one for the MIDI. There's some settings in here that you may need to tinker or adjust. Down at the bottom, it says drive space N space A. What that is telling you is that drive N is going to launch up on the desktop and it's gonna see letter A drive of whoever you're trying to chat with. In this case, the Mega STE. Now, in one of the printouts, I could have, I, I'm almost assured that it said, no, drive N is the magic number N that's gonna pop up on here, but it's seeing your A drive and you're allowing A drive to be visible to the other people. I tried that and I couldn't get diddly squat to work and that's probably what spun my wheels for hours. I was tinkering with stuff, but I finally got it to work. N slash a, N space A means N pops up on my TT desktop and it's gonna look at, if I would type in C here, it would see the hard drive of my Mega STE. I don't have a hard drive on there and that's why it wouldn't work. So I put A and it, so it sees A. Over on that one, it's the exact opposite. Over there, I've got drive space N space C. Because I've got a C hard drive in here, and it can see my C drive. In fact, I've got to double check and make sure it still does. Give me a second. Double click. Yep, it's on there. Uh, do you want proof? No, you believe me, right? So anyway, I've now networked two Ataris. How cool is that? Now, Duet, like it sounds, Duet means two. I don't think you can tie three or more computers together. It's two. For me, that's fine right now. I'm going to explore... MIDI-com, but like I said, it's in German. Uh, I don't speak German. I don't read German. I can maybe translate some of the instructions on how to do it, but I wasn't quite there yet. Maybe when I get a hard drive installed on my Mega STE, I'll explore it, and I'll explore the LAN port more, but I have a feeling that either ports, it's not working right on one of them, or my cabling's off, or the program duet's really not there to make it work. I haven't seen any proof that it's, a, it's they say it will work, but it didn't work. So anyway, that's it. I've now got, I played Mini Maze the other day with four computers tied together. Today, I've networked two Ataris together with a MIDI connection cable, and I can share data now with each other, share at least whatever drive I give it permission to view, uh, and it works. There you go. Thanks for watching the video. Have a great rest of your day. Bye.